people to want to give large offerings and then to be promised great wealth. But that's not what this message is about, folks. We're talking about the condition to get God's blessing and also the consequence of not obeying Him. So turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I want to show you some things. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Are you there, folks? Now, this is a very long chapter. There's 68 verses. I'm not going to read all 68 verses, but I'm going to read some of them. Now, let me just start in verse 1, and I'll skip down to a few of the other verses, and then we're going to talk about them. Verse 1, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Now, let me stop there, folks. Let's look at that verse again. And look at the seventh word of this verse. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. If, my friends, that's a conditional word. So if they do obey the voice of God, and they do it diligently, and they carefully observe the commandments, then God will set them high above all nations. In verse 2, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 3, Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the country, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Verse 5, Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. Now again, I want to draw your attention to verse 5. We just read it. But there's one word I want you to keep in mind right there. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Now, when we were examining the parables of Jesus, it is very evident that the Holy Scriptures of God, the Word of God, has layers. And I have shared that many times. The parables have layers. There's a surface meaning, and then there's a deeper spiritual meaning. Sometimes it can go into two, three, four, five parts. So verse 5 that I just read, blessed shall be your basket, has more than one meaning. Now, of course, on the surface, it's talking about the basket of their farming and their raising crops. They will be able to fill baskets with those crops. But I want you to just keep that in mind for right now. Okay, folks? Baskets. Verse 7, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Verse 8, the Lord will command the blessing on you in the storehouse and in all which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Again, that is a double meaning, my friends. He will bless you in the land the Lord has given you. There is also a promised land for every one of us. And God is going to bless us someday when we arrive beyond the veil in the afterlife. When we arrive beyond the veil, just arriving there as a destination is not the entire heart of the matter. A big part of the equation that many, many people forget is how blessed and happy and satisfied will God be with you after you arrive there. That's a big portion of the equation, my friends. Now I want to jump down to verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give you rain on your land in its season, to bless all of the work of your hand. And look at this next part right here, folks. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Lending to other nations is a blessing? Huh. Well, is the United States lending to many nations right now? No, it's not. In fact, we're doing the opposite, aren't we, folks? As we go down this chapter, you're going to see that it is not a blessing to be borrowing from other nations. I don't want to sidetrack our sermon, but right there should be a giant warning light, red flag, alert, alert, danger, Will Robinson, danger. And right there, we just read a scripture, a verse from the Holy Word of God that tells us that the blessing of God is lending to other nations, not borrowing. How interesting is it that many prosperity gospel preachers use Deuteronomy chapter 28 and they blow right past that and they don't stop to consider that, hey, the United States of America is not participating in this verse right here. Huh. Maybe we need to reconsider some things. Maybe we need to examine some things. 
Maybe we need to take some matters to God in prayer and ask Him for His insight on these things. But again, I don't want to sidetrack, folks. Moving on. Verse 13, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. So when you have time, this is your homework, my friends. Read Deuteronomy 28 and look at all the blessings. And then compare them to what is happening in America right now. Compare them to the situation in America. Compare them to the situation in your life. Now the word if was the conditional word to get these blessings. And if the people did not obey the voice of God, then the curses would happen. And Deuteronomy 28 goes on to explain from verse 15 on what the curses will be for those that do not obey. So let's look at those. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments and His statutes, which I command you today, that all of these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Verse 16. Cursed shall you be in the city. Cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Now, I asked you to make note of verse 5. Blessed shall be your basket. So now, please make note of verse 17. Cursed shall be your basket. Just underline it and make note of that because I'm going to come back to that and I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. Verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land. Verse 19. Cursed shall you be when you come in. Cursed shall you be when you go out. Verse 20. The Lord will send on you cursing confusion and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. Now, folks, verse 20, think about that. The Lord will send you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do. Right now, in America, we have the financial system trying all sorts of ideas, all sorts of measures. We have people in survival mode. They're just treading waters, trying not to sink. We have massive unemployment occurring right now. There's massive confusion in households, in families. We have churches in confusion. We have people going to church, having confusion, and then they leave church in confusion. According to verse 20, when there's a lot of confusion and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until the people are destroyed and perish, that is a curse, my friends. So may I offer and submit unto you that is it not apparent that there is a curse in play right now over the nation of America and over the West and over the world right now because of these events that we see occurring in the financial world? Indeed, my friends, when we weigh the current situation and the current news stories to Deuteronomy 28 verse 20, it, it doesn't sound like the blessing of God is over America. Verse 21, the Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. Well, there is one plague that has begun here in America from the poison waters from the core exit down in the Gulf of Mexico. That has begun. Verse 22, the Lord will strike you with consumption. And what is that? A disease that consumes the body and kills a person. Could it be cancer? Well, cancer consumes. And also with fever, with inflammation, with severe burning fever, with the sword, with scorching, and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. Look at that, folks. Mildew is a curse. 23. And your heavens which are over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under you shall be iron. Folks, I would indeed say that that would be a terrible part of the curse. Trying to seek the face of God, and the heavens are brass and bronze, and your prayers bounce off and come right back. He doesn't hear to not be able to communicate with our Father who dwells in the heavens. And look at this, folks. You shall become troublesome to all the kingdoms of the earth. Is not America troublesome right now to the rest of the world? Buy our treasury bills. It's a great investment. And now many nations of the world possess our treasury bills, but those treasuries are troublesome. And our financial policies are troublesome to the rest of the world. And what the United States is doing to the dollar by manipulating it is troublesome to the rest of the world. Folks, according to what we're seeing right here, the United States is in the condition of a curse right now. 26, your carcasses shall be food for the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and no one shall frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with boils of Egypt, with tumors, with the scab, with the itch from which you cannot be healed. And the Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion. There it is again, folks. 
I've shared in the past that a great darkness 